This video is on representing the modern atom. We're going to learn two techniques called box diagrams and electron configurations to do this. And I just want to remind you of some ways we represented atoms in the past. So Bohr is an easy model to do because it's very simple to draw, but we have to remember that it's not what we think about the atom. So we need to do a method that actually represents what the modern atom is like. So Bohr was simple because it was just a bunch of little circles. So we have a little dot that represents the nucleus and around the nucleus we have rings that represented energy levels that the electrons could go in. And there could only be so many electrons on each ring or each energy level. And we represented them by dots. And so if you had a lithium, lithium atom, you would need three electrons. And the first two would go in the first energy level, and then that would be full. And the third one would go in the second energy level. And you learn that you could have two electrons maximum in the first energy level. You could have eight electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the second energy level. And you could have 18, although I'm not drawing them all, in the third energy level. And it depended on what atom you were drawing is how many electrons you needed to have. But you only had two at the most, eight and 18. We did talk about electrons can move, but that was when they were excited. So these are all ground state atoms that we're going to draw now. And then we learned that the modern atom was a lot more complicated than that. And on page 213 in your problem book, we outline some of the differences in Bohr's atom and the modern atom. So if you want to get out page 213, you can push pause and follow along with me. But Bohr had the energy levels, first, second, third, fourth energy level. And he also had that there were two, eight, 18, and 32 electrons in those energy level. But it gets a lot more complicated than that. So in reality, the energy levels have sublevels. So first energy level has one, second, two, third, three. And these sublevels, have different shapes, and we can tell the shapes by the name of the sublevels. S's are spheres, P's are kind of like two lobes together, D's are like four lobes together, and F's are like eight lobes together. And it even gets more complicated than that because they come in sets. So P's come in sets of three, D's come in sets of five, and F's come in sets of seven. So a lot more complicated. So what happens if I go to try to draw the modern atom? Well, I don't usually do a good job, but I'm going to try. You draw a little nucleus. And remember, we can't do that to scale um, because the nucleus would be very, very small. So at the beginning, it's pretty easy because the first energy level has one sublevel. It's an s orbital. And it's just a sphere, so not two-dimensional, but think of that as a sphere. And there's two electrons in there somewhere. And then the second energy level is split into S and P orbitals. So these energy levels are bigger. So just like in Bohr's model, we draw them bigger. So this would be the second energy level. So somewhere in this sphere are two more electrons, or can be two more electrons. And then the P sublevels. So here's one orbital, which can have two electrons. This is another orbital, which can have two electrons. And this is the third orbital that can have two more electrons. So now we have six in the P's and eight all together in the second energy level. And then we go to the third energy level. And oh my goodness, it gets more and more complicated, difficult to draw. So in case mine wasn't very easy to see, I picked one offline. And you can see different spheres representing the 1s, 2s, and 3s orbitals. And here we have some p orbitals. So once again, difficult to draw. So we're going to use a technique called a box diagram to represent 
the atom, especially the electrons in the atom. And so that's this page here, which is actually in your problem book also on page 303, but yours has a lot smaller boxes. So I've made it a little bit larger, but push pause again and get out page 303 of your problem book. And then you can follow along with me. So press pause and then press play after you get this out. So now that you have it out, we're going to go ahead and draw the atom according to these box diagrams. And so let me talk a little bit about the box diagrams. The numbers here represent the energy levels, first energy level, second energy level, which is split, split and the third energy level, which we haven't completed, just shown the, the S and the P. Each box represents one orbital. So S's come in sets of one, P's come in sets of three. So there's three boxes for the P orbitals. Okay? And in each box, we can hold two electrons at the most. So that's kind of what this represents. Also on this side, I have the atoms off the periodic table, starting with hydrogen, which is atomic number one, helium two, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon. So we're going along the periodic table. So we're going to add electrons to this box diagram. And instead of using dots like we did in Bohr's model, we're going to use arrows, or what I use is half arrows, to re represent the electrons. So let's start with hydrogen. We have one electron for hydrogen, so I draw one arrow. And it goes in the lowest possible orbital, because it's not excited. So it's going to go in this 1s orbital, and that's what it looks like. So that's a representation for the hydrogen atom with one electron in the 1s orbital. Um, then let's do helium. Helium has two electrons. So one electron in the 1s orbital. And just like um, Bohr's model, you can have two electrons in this first energy level. So I need to put another electron in this 1s orbital. But I have to follow a couple principles when I do that. And I've got those written down, so you might want to pause it again and copy this. One principle is called the Aufbau principle, which is a German word for building up. So basically, we're going to keep adding electrons, but we're always going to add them at the lowest possible energy level. Okay? And the other principle we're going to use right now, so you can pause it again, is the Pauli exclusion principle. And it says, only two electrons can go in each orbital, which we've already talked about, and they must have opposite spins. Remember, electrons repel each other, so the only way we can get them in the same orbital to together is if they have opposite spins, which would create opposite magnetic fields, and there would be some attraction to offset the repulsive forces that have it. So according to Aufbau, I have to fill up the lowest energy, so I have to put it in here. And according to the Pauli's exclusion theory, I also have to give it the opposite spin, which we represent by making an upside down arrow. So this represents hydrogen's one electron. This is helium's two electrons. All right, so let's go on. And you'll probably notice the patterns. So lithium has three electrons, one, two, and I can't put the third one in here. This is full, so I have to go up to the second energy level. Beryllium has four electrons, so one, two, three, and I don't go up here until this is doubled up, and I have four electrons. We move to boron, one, two, three, four, five electrons. Pretty simple pattern. Carbon, one, two, three, four, five, oops. Got to pause for a second. I have to add one more electron. So you might want to, you might think it would go in this box, but these are all 2p orbitals and the electrons repel each other. So I'm not jumping an energy level if I put it right here, all right? I'm still in the 2p's. These are all at the same energy level. It would be wrong for me to put it in the 3s because that's a different energy level, but these are all the same. So I put the second one here, and that follows the third principle, 
which you might want to pause for, Hund's rule, which says when filling a set of orbitals, like a set of P, which come in threes, or a set of D, which come in fives, or a set of Fs, which come in sevens, the electrons enter one orbital at a time before doubling up, and all have parallel spins. So it's kind of like what I said what happened when I had children and bedrooms. Um, my first child got her own room, my second child got her own room, and when the third child came along, I ran out of bedrooms, so now we had to double up. Well, same thing here. All of these electrons, since it's the same energy level, it's not a different one. This is all 2P. Everyone's going to get their own room before they double up. Okay? So that's carbon 6. So you might guess that nitrogen is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay? And nitrogen is 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Ooh, 8? No, we're not going to put it here because that's a new energy level. What one was that? That's the 3S energy level. I've got to fill in the 2Ps before I can jump up. So now I start doubling up. So now there's a double up. And fluorine... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And neon, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sodium, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I have to start a new one, eleven. And then 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And I don't go here because I've got to fill up the 3s, the 3s orbital way identified way up there. So here. All right. So that's how we do box diagrams. So now I can represent the modern view with a very simple technique. So this is one way to represent what the modern atom, at least where the electrons are going in the modern atom without buying all the shapes. There's one more way that we can draw the modern atom. And that's called the electron configuration. And we will save that to next time.